Hi guys, welcome once again. Today we're going to be looking at the SDR Play RSP1A and this is a very cost effective um, SDR radio solution that is available on multi platforms and as you can see I've got it running here. It's pretty busy where I am. I'm going to show you how to get to this point and happy days so let's get cracking now the first thing we're going to do we're going to shut this down for a second and we're going to go to the um the, the sdr play website now that's a fairly simple process you just quite simply www.sdrplay.com and jump in there um, and you'll see here there it is um, no, we just say no right okay now this is the main website and what we're going to do here is we're going to go straight away to to uh, download um, there is a process where you can actually start and actually go through the um, like a almost like a, uh, a wizard uh, go through so you could do that if you wanted to I don't like that ver version I actually much prefer just to go straight to the software and then download the latest version of SDR Uno now at the moment it's 1.22 yours might be later yours might be earlier who knows um, up here you'll see that there's actually the, the 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 different platforms that are supported in one way or another and that's not always by str uno there may other be there may be other programs um that will actually do that for you and if you look down the list here you can actually see there's lots and lots uh str console um you've got adsb which is the uh, radar thing for aircraft You've also got HD SDR there as well. And again, all of these programs are absolutely fabulous and really it's they're all sort of free and there for you to use and they all work really well with this, this um, SDR play. So, but we're gonna play with the um, SDR Uno, which is pretty good, it's free. Um, it can be a little busy at times, but it, it's pretty good. It's a very powerful piece of software. And as like I say, it's absolutely free. It's available um, for uh, Windows and you quite simply click on it, fill in the form, say you're not a robot um, and away you go and then hit to start download. So I've already done that and I've already installed it. Now the install process is fairly simple. Okay, I'm not going to teach anyone to suck eggs. Do not install the hardware before you install the software. The software will tell you when to plug the actual device in and I would advise that you do just that when, when it says. So just go through the install process, install the hardware when it asks and that's pretty much it. Away you go and then it puts a little um, shortcut on the top of your desktop and you just simply double click on it. Now the first thing that it's going to do, it's going to fill your screen up with Windows. Now I know, I know, I know, I know it looks really complicated but it's not actually that complicated this here is your main window okay and that is going to be you know it's that's where you're going to be playing most of the time and up here is kind of like a, almost like a selected view and we also get control over the bandwidth up the up here um, and that's very useful i'll show you what that's uh, what you can use that for this next little window here is mainly where a lot of the filtering and you know that that's that kind of stuff um, lives um and if we come over here to this sort of section this is where you've got direct entry you can enter in a frequency there you can do all sorts of things happy days here you've got your level meters or your signal level meters and you can change that from peak to rms um, and you know that sort of stuff here you've got your main vfo frequency and again you can change from vfo a vfo b and um, what you simply do i mean in my case i'm using just a simple mouse wheel um which I, i'll you know which has got a little wheel on it and i can move that and and the frequency changes over here you've got your modes your different modes am sam fm cw and then you've got down here you've got um sort of sub modes so that might be narrow fm or um, medium fm or, or wide fm whatever it might be sort of for um for broadcast radio and you've also got super wide uh, fm there as well what else does it do we've got some preset filters over here which will give you um you know sort of so many kilohertz um bandwidth um, of your of your filter there 
Um, and you've got some um, other type of filtering here as well, which noise blankers and that sort of stuff. And you've also got notches and that sort of that kind of uh, thing. You've also got control over the AGC here um, and you can set that to either off, fast, medium or slow. Over here, you've got your, your main controls. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'll show you is I'm just I'm, I'm grip. I use the left mouse button to grip and then slide. And again, with the volume grip and then slide. And you can turn the squelch on and off by simply left mouse clicking on the squelch button there. If you want to mute the audio, you can. You can mute the audio. We're not going to do that. What else does it do? Um, this window here. And this is this is quite an important window. And over here, you've got control of these these kind of windows. So, I think if I click on, oh, maybe not. Um, but if you if we if we create another another instance of a receiver and what this is done this is created a second um, essentially radio now the one thing to remember is if you look here once you start creating these these here you'll notice these numbers have changed okay um, and we can select um, you can you can th these will these will tell you which which windows correspond with which windows so all of these are linked as zero one and if i pull this down and then pull that one down you'll see that the windows underneath are associated with zero so you've got zero and zero there but all the others are, are, are one and um there is a way of uh, ch changing this i believe anyway it doesn't matter that much but you can see what the process is they they, they get tied by these little numbers here now i'm going to get rid of that one so we'll delete that one out of the way this little button here that ties these windows together so you can actually um you know you don't they don't move around and get get lost and you don't have to if you don't want to have all of these windows open these are just the most used sort of windows um, on this sort of section here, you have a bias T. Now, if you have something like a, um, a powered LNA for something like L-band uh, satellite, um, you might be running a little uh, low noise amplifier. Um, then that bias T is very useful. It powers that amplifier. So you can turn that on and off. Here you've also, you can um, enable or disable broadcast notch filters. And over here, you can actually enable, disable DAB notch filters. And on the RSP one, they do have um, those those filters built in. And they've also got uh, some front-end pre-selected -pre uh, front-end filters. What else can we do? Um, up here, this is the um, sample rate. Now, obviously, the more this affects the bandwidth of the of the received signal. So here you can see the span is 2000 kilohertz. Now, if I click this and it should um, let's see what it does. If we if we enable it, enable it here, you can now see that it's 10,000 kilohertz. So you, you can change the width of, of what you can see. And, you know, that's that's quite a lot. The only downside with this is that, that if you have an older machine, then then obviously that's going to really put a lot of pressure on your on your CPU. That may or may not work for you. And if you if you push the CPU to, to uh, CPU too hard, then you get like a, a jittery uh, output, and that's not good for anyone. Um, let's face facts. So what I, I tend to do is leave it on two meg for you know for the time being, and the decimation you can also play with but again this actually has um this also has an effect on on you know on one the performance of the pc and um and it also gives you um it's, it's decimation it kind of affects the 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 background noise um, a little bit so it kind of gives you that a little bit of deeper uh, signal to noise ratio um, and you can see just how much it sort of changed um, with that. Um, but again, I, I just I kind of experiment with these sort of things because obviously everyone's computer is different. I mean, I have a very powerful machine here. This this will run most stuff. Um, but the for the 
for the older machines that you, you might need to just play around to get the best out of it. And one of the big grumbles I get all the time is that it's, you know, I'm not hearing anything. I think the RSP1 is deaf. Well, it's not. It's because what a lot of people do, they push this gain up too high. Um, and if I just bring that down a little bit and then show you what that kind of does, you can see if I bring the gain up too high, what it's done is it's brought the noise up and you'll see that the signal here is um, is very you know noise signal to noise ratio is very low it's it's changed it's you know being masked and in fact you can almost obliterate the signal entirely you know and and if you've got a weak signal you're not going to see it um, so sometimes it's best just to run the, the the gain just down a little bit and now you can see that we can see so many more signals um, again you're going to be playing with that just a little bit um i think just to get the, the the best out of it um you know just keep just keep experimenting that's what it's all about now then while we've got this running so i think we're pretty much done with this this window here um uh, let's move on to say recording there you go it's pretty useful a lot of people like to record um what what they what they hear and this little section here will actually will will enable that to happen you can um, record you can you can play it back you can stop it you can you know pause it you can stop it you can rewind it it's pretty good stuff and and there's no end to to that sort of sort of thing and if i remember rightly i think you can set this up so that you can record to say something like one of the usb uh, dongles over here you've got uh, memories um, you can store channels um, down here and you know then you can just go back to them at a simple click um, that's fairly sort of straightforward so while we've got it running let's let's zoom into a signal and again you've down here that we can we get to, this gives you some control over what what's going on um, on the screen so if we zoom in and this is obviously is the zoom you can zoom out or sorry zoom zoom in and zoom out as easy as pi um that also gives you um here you can change what you see so for instance you can have a you can change it to a combination um you can change it to spectrum and waterfall um or if you just want the waterfall you can have just the waterfall or just the spectrum so you know i like it quite like that it works for me um so let's have a look at this window in a little bit more detail let's just say for instance we've got two signals here very close to one another so we'll if we just center over the top and just give it a little click we're now sort of somewhere on the top and here you can see if we bring that out you can see that this is actually seeing more than one signal and when he when he actually uh, comes back you'll see that it receives more than one 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 signal at a time in fact we're spanning there uh, two signals so what you what you'll find is that um that one uh, signal can interfere with the other one like you know co-channel uh, interference um so what we what we do is we'll we'll zoom over him like so and what you can do is you can bring this down okay and that will give you so you can change the actual bandwidth so here you can sort of see again there's two channels very close to one another if i bring that out we're now seeing two channels at once and that that sounds awful um i don't know if we can hear, don't know if we can hear that so what we're going to do then is we can actually then wind this in just to that one so that's all we're listening to and that's really really good for things like cw so for instance if um if i mute him off for a second and then we're whiz down to say there you go let's go 14 yeah let's go 14 to 1 and we'll go lower sideband no we won't we'll go upper sideband and yeah that should do it um Right, okay, let's try dropping down to say seven megs and see if there's anything there. There you go. That, that looks like a bit of CW. Maybe not. Right, 
Well, I can't believe it. Oh, that's why I'm on the wrong aerial. But that's okay, it doesn't matter. There you go, that's a bit of CW, is it? Maybe not. No. Well, I'm not on the best aerial there, um, unfortunately. Um, but what you can do is... Um, oh, there's the other thing as well. I've just actually zeroed that off. You can actually now put in the frequency directly. So if you just click on megahertz, one, um, we'll go one, four, zero, one, two, three. And another one that's 140 megs. And we just say enter and that's it, it jumps to, to 140. Um, again, if you've got sort of like a very narrow band um, a, a transmission um, or a narrow transmission, then you, you can bring this right the way down really and again you can sort of see what we're doing here we're bringing it right the way in and it's a really really good way of um, filtering out sort of you know noise from from maybe in you know interference qrm that sort of stuff anyway i think we pretty much covered it it's up to you guys now just you know as i say if you've got one of these little units or, or thinking about getting one um you know they're, they're easily available um, get them from Martin Lynch and Sons. Um, they are cheap. Um, next day delivery in most cases. Um, and as I say, these things are just such good value for money. And the performance from them is is amazing, really, considering how much they cost. And you can see what I'm I'm playing with here. It's just uh, it's really really good fun. And if you want to, you can go into sort of some of the digital stuff and then use something like DSD Plus to decode some of the DMR. Um, possibly some of the D-Star and that sort of stuff. And then things start to become even more interesting because there's so, so much more. You can also decode FT8, PSK31 uh, or PSK60, whatever, 64. And um, there's tons and tons and tons. And if you then couple this up with something like HRD, which has got uh, DM780 built in, then you can again you can you know that it that does a whole range of, of bits and pieces including satellites you could um you know you don't need um uh, like a, a massive great yagi array if you've got a low passing satellite you you can listen to that satellite broadcasting things like uh, packet data and um, pictures and all that sort of stuff and this will do all of that 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 sort of stuff it's fabulous fun seriously it's really really good the kids will love it you know and as i say it's just it's really really cool stuff um you know getting images from space just from you know from a little tiny you know 90 quid uh, sdr device so guys go get one of these um like i say they're available at hamradio.co.uk happy days enjoy thanks for watching Give us a thumbs up or thumbs down if you really, really want. But please subscribe for more videos just like this one because there's tons, tons more coming. I'm looking at the expert SDR um, stuff in the future. Flex 64 in the future. Um, 7610 maybe. Icon 8600. Um, you name it. It's all coming. So please subscribe, okay? And make sure you hit the notifications. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.